Hello everyone, Cameron O'Hara here with Know Your Planets today talking about something that I don't usually talk about and that is a planet from the EU. Now I'll be honest right up front here, I wasn't really into the EU at all back before the Disney acquisition and in fact it wasn't until the Disney acquisition that I really started to get deep into the lore of Star Wars but I'm still interested in getting into this stuff because I know they're cherry picking from it for their new canon and it's just kind of interesting to take a look at what was back in the day. So today I'm going to look at this planet called Rordak, and I'm doing this new approach to my video today. Usually what I do is a mock documentary of a planet, but a planet like this, Rordak, which was recommended to me by a viewer a few months ago, doesn't have any visual depictions of it as far as I can see. So I'm just going to kind of look through things and kind of explore what it's about, maybe learn something about this planet, and the greater Star Wars universe, and maybe some of you folks out there can point out some stuff to me that I did not notice before. So, without further ado, let's get into this Rordak, a planet in the Rordak system. It was an imperial penal colony with an orbital nightcloak. These things are interesting to me because they, they're supposed to work in sequence with one another. You have a whole bunch of them up there and they block out the sun, which is supposed to have you know effects on the environment. Here it says here, eventually turning the world into solid ice and killing all life. But also I think it was used in the case of Rordak here to kind of torture or put its prisoners, the prisoners in this imperial penal colony, in a bad spot psychologically. Now, interesting to me here, a battle was fought here between 3681 and 3653 BBY. This is a battle, not a war, between the Sith Empire and the Galactic Republic. So the battle ended, Boris Ulgo personally boarded Moff Scepter's battle cruiser. Boris Ulgo, look at that armor, he looks kind of like Thanos right there. And he's voiced by Steve Blum, our main man. Way to go, dude. That's cool. He's been in... He's been in the thick of it for a long time here. Who is this guy? He's a human male. Uh, has the Republic forgotten? I won the Battle of Rordak by personally boarding Moff Scepter's battle cruiser. So he, even he's talking about this planet in the past tense within the universe. He's born on Alderaan. That's pretty cool. So does that mean that this is kind of like Alderaan armor here? I'm not entirely sure, but that's pretty interesting. Moff Scepter. Interesting to me that the title of Moff goes as far back as it does. This is 3,000 plus years before the Battle of Yavin. He was a Moff of the reconstituted Sith Empire. Now we don't have any ties in new canon to the title of Moth to like any Sith traditions, do we? It's just a title that's been around for a while, but that's interesting that it has those Sith connections. I wonder if that will be unearthed in future installments of the Star Wars universe. It's a, it was the only planet in its systems. There was originally three inner worlds, but they were consumed when the star expanded to form a red giant. My main science right here up in Star Wars, red giants, those things are cool. Cause I, I love my science like I love my Star Wars. Let's take a look. How does a star become a red giant? They shine because they're converting hydrogen into helium in their cores through a process called fusion, nuclear fusion. And this new extreme light pressure pushes out the star's outer layers, beginning its life as a red giant star. A red giant will expand outward many times its original size. So these things get bigger. How long do these things last for? A few thousand to one billion years they can live as a red giant, so that's interesting. Back to Rordak. The results of the red giant star being formed resulted in scorched earth and tectonic shifts. But over the next few million years, okay, million years, so that's interesting too. So this, this star became a red giant and then over the next few million years, entirely new forms of life evolved, including the Visca, which seem to be, well, which are, you know, native life forms of this planet. Millions of years, but that's okay because red giant can last for up to a billion years so that's still with well within the realms of possibilities they have flying cities and yes this is where the uh you know the upper class and the natives the viscas at least the rich ones lived uh yes that's right they lived in repulsor lift buildings and i don't know about you but i just love this word repulsor lift it's such a cool word the tradition came from the need to stay away from the ground. That's right. So they were. That's so interesting that they, the Visca, are native to the planet, but they, the planet's conditions are so 
inhospitable that they have to like go up in these big repulsor lift power buildings and live up in the sky. And then they put all the penal colonies down on the ground so everyone had to suffer through <laughs> the volcanic activity and all that crap that's going on down there. Yikes. What a terrible place to be a prisoner. The upper levels of these cities were reserved for the Royal Visca clan. So I guess Visca are probably all over these things, but just the upper levels have the royalty. Rorodak is a planet that you do not want to find yourself on, and maybe next time, as a counter, we'll look at some place that's a little bit more uh, pleasant to be in. So with that done, I'd like to just say thank you very much for listening. I'm going to try to make these videos a little bit more regularly, but until next time, if you have a planet that you want talked about, or if you have any thoughts about Rordak here that you want to share with me, leave a comment below. And may the Force be with you. Peace.